term, and a lot can change then. And I feel when you're relying on rentals for, for something like this, um, you know, it's easy to say we only need it so many hours a year, but when you need it, you really need it, and that's when everybody else needs the rental equipment. And so I, um, I'm with Frank. I think that uh, it's fiscally prudent and uh, it's a sound decision to, to go with buying the used grader that the manager and the uh, public works director have recommended. Caitlin? I just want to comment that I agree with Frank that if I was talking about using a road grader that the inflation rates and the rental rates will change and it would be a good idea to invest now in one but I'm saying that there may be other possibilities out there that have been raised that we don't need a road grader or rent a road grader or lease a road grader altogether that with the you know the current chemicals and salt and everything that is used on roads that what we have a, you know a dump truck with a plow and wings or the other equipment that we seem to have lots of heavy equipment in our public works department would be capable of handling the job is all I'm saying is that we might not need a road grader that it seems obsolete in nowadays public work systems okay Jessica um, I think that um, uh, Caitlin brings up an excellent point I'm concerned that maybe uh, Councillor Governale may have not considered all the labor costs in purchasing and labor uh, salary wages and benefits those go up along with inflation and sometimes greater I'll show you the spreadsheet if you're interested Jessica okay but I, I think that I mean I think the numbers that we've we've been given by uh, various citizens are frankly quite compelling I think that um, <clears throat> it's worth looking at closely um, I know, as I, I mentioned in a workshop, that South Portland does not use a grader on its section of 77. And um, <clears throat> I think that when we have as many citizens as we've had worried about this, that it may, it may be worth a second look. Um, and the other, and I would like to just re reinforce that, yes, uh, inflation goes up, but the costs of everything go up. And I, I don't think that um, oh, and, and the other point I want to make is, is, is to Councillor Swiftkayada's comment about when you need it, you need it, which of course is true. <laughs> However, that's something you build into a contract, an RFP, a request for proposals. And um, South Portland has such a thing. They have graders at <coughs> parking lots, and they have it in their proposal that when things start to snow, they have two graders available immediately. So it can be done. And so I would like to also reinforce what Councillor Jordan is saying. It, it's a possibility it can be done. If I could make a suggestion, and that would be uh, if either Caitlin or Jessica would be willing to make a, a, a motion to a, or a, propose an amendment to the motion, and then we could take a vote on that and, and then We're not move the to question that forward. item, though. What's that? It's not included in the item we're voting on now. No. It's further okay. down. Right, Mike? I no, believe it no. is item 72. Yeah. It's one of the lines it's, there. It's, so in, we, it's in item 72. It's, so we should wait until we get the last line. Thank you, Dan. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I understood that it was part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, but sorry. that would have been a fair point if uh, it were not in there. Um, Caitlin, would you like to? So you'd make an amendment to, would you table the road grader? How would you? I well, my, my only suggestion, and then if somebody else has a better <laughs> idea, is that you would make a motion to remove the proposed $140,000 expenditure for the used grader from line item 715 capital projects. So essentially this budget would be reduced, that particular line would be reduced by $140,000. Of course that would impact the overall grant total as well. And did you have and another thought? I just wanted to um, caution that any tabling motions that are made, there's no discussion allowed mm -hmm. on a tabling motion. So I would just agree with David better to amend by saying remove that just a caution because it sort of cuts off discussion right my, my only concern is that if we remove the money that public works has clearly set aside for this road grader and the use of it is that the public works budget will then be affected because they're going to obviously need to have money to do it in another <coughs> way and so that's why my initial question was how it affects the rest of the budget, because they're going to obviously need some more money in other areas in order to cover the cost of having lost their road grader. 
Right. Well, that's a fair question. Sarah, did you have a thought on that, or just would you like to offer something else? I just wanted to quickly note that I have found over the years that have been on the council that Bob Manley is an incredibly frugal uh, administrator of his department. I don't think he ever buys anything that he doesn't desperately need and sometimes needs for several years before he uh, requests that it be purchased. Um, you know, he's got a lot of Yankee blood in him, and I, I can't imagine that he would be asking for this road grader if he didn't need it. It's just not in his, in his <clears throat> makeup. So I, I feel in the absence of overwhelming information, which I don't think we have. We have two conflicting opinions, really. I don't feel the need to override his request. Um, rather, I feel I think that it's a, a sound uh, fiscal decision to give some, some weight to the, to the person who's in charge of the budget and in charge of the operations and sees at three in the morning what they need and what they don't need. So I guess I won't be in favor of uh, an amendment that would strip this, this line item out. And I'm, I'm trying to honor uh, Caitlin's desire to, to bring the issue sort of to a head and also I appreciate your concern that if we were to remove the 140,000 that you would need to add back in some money to maintain the existing grader that we have and I was just trying to flip through the 15 pages of emails on this I know embedded in here somewhere I thought was Bob Malley's uh, annual maintenance cost for the grader um, I, I, at least I thought I saw that in there somewhere um, $602 yeah. $602 per year mm -hmm. okay so we're not actually talking about I mean, I don't know if that number would be bigger given the age of the grader, but I guess we're not talking about a huge swing, Caitlin. But, but if you didn't buy it, if you didn't buy it, had a rent, there'd be a rental fee, which was calculated, I think, $3,300 or so. Right. That's my concern. Is if you take it out, he's going to the the road still has to be plowed and cleared, and it has to be done. Uh, yeah, I would think that if you were to say $10,000 to sort of place back in, that would more than cover the anticipated costs if we were to have to rent. Go ahead, Anne. Or you could accomplish the same. What I think mm -hmm. is your objective is to say yes to the total amount of the budget, but you want to prohibit the purchase of a grader. That works for me. Uh, not that I'm suggesting that, but just in an effort to sort of move this along. Okay. Jessica. In fact, that's I was going to say the same thing because, in, in, and I also appreciate what Councilor Jordan is trying to say, is that this is a budget item if we take it out, but we still have the greater. We just don't buy a new one. Okay. So Would you like to make that amendment? I will make you an amendment that we prohibit the purchase of the road greater with $140,000 and leave the $140,000 in the budget to be used you know, in another way or... I don't know how you would just leave it in there, but how would somebody like me to reword that? Just prohibit the purchase of the road grader for 140000 Okay. So the, the, you've made a motion then to amend the motion that's on the table. Is there a second? <coughs> I second. Okay. Any further discussion on the proposed amendment? I have more discussion on the budget itself, but, not, but this is just the okay. amendment. So we, I believe we need to take a vote then on the proposed amendment. All those in favor of the proposed amendment? All those opposed? Okay. So the proposed amendment doesn't carry, but thank you for making the proposal regardless. Uh, Sarah, we still have the motion on the table, and it's been seconded. Do you have further commentary? I just wanted to quickly note that um, I, I guess I wanted to, to differ with the, the – assertion that, that, number one, our municipal buildings, I forget the term, are overbuilt, or that somehow this notion that we have far more space than we're utilizing, I, I don't find that to be the case. There may be an occasional room here and there that's not filled with people, as is generally the case in the building, but my observation as I go around is that our buildings are used heavily and uh, the space is necessary. So on that, on that point, I would disagree. And more vehemently, I guess I struggle with the notion that, that, our, that the expectation should be that we bring in 0% increases on taxes every year. Um, as everyone here has noted, costs go up every year. Uh, this Sunday in the New York Times, there was a very interesting graph, which I wish I had ripped out and brought in, 
noting the percentage of increase that things had gone up, and it listed virtually every single thing that you would possibly need in your life, starting with gasoline and fuel, and moving all the way down to many food items and shelter and clothing, and not surprisingly, the graph showed increases on every single one. I think there was one that did not go up, some small, it's like vegetables or something. So I guess in light of that, given that our world or our country is constructed on the concept that costs go up every year, what's, I guess I don't understand the thinking that says that in our town, we shouldn't pay the peop our people that work for us enough so that they can adapt to those cost increases. How with a 0% increase and a 0% <coughs> pay raise, are they supposed to live in that world that constantly goes up when they don't? Essentially what you're doing is you're giving them pay cuts every year. And I would find that to be not only unfair, but highly irresponsible. So I refute the notion that at baseline we should be having zero percents every year and anything above that is somehow a failure of our fiscal um, ability. I, I, I think that we actually sometimes hand in exceptionally small tax increases. I think we do as good a job as humanly possible to allow our teachers and our administrator and our staff and all the fine people that work for our town to be able to live and survive and pay their rent and feed their children like the rest of us. So um, I guess I disagree with the people who say that we're not doing our job by, by increasing taxes. Everything else in the world is increasing. Our property taxes have to increase to, to, to reflect that. Any further comments? Uh, Anne. Um, I just wanted to comment on municipal budget. I think that it's um, fiscally prudent. I think it's wise for us to maintain our infrastructure. I also think I know that the um, municipal employees got no raise last year. The manager hasn't had a raise in two years. And um, I also have heard uh, comments that all these people who are upset about the greater or other things, and there, there may be an, a, a few out there, but I went through this afternoon and uh, looked at every single email I've received on the budget this year and I've only received emails from three people on the grader. Now they may have people behind them, a number of people behind them, but we have not. I just wanted to um, correct what some may think has been an avalanche of emails about the grader or any other budget issue this year. Uh, I think the, the people that I've run into at uh, IGA and CVS and places like that um, have been um, remarkably sanguine about the budget this year. And uh, I think they understand it's tough and that everybody's doing their best. Um, but I think Sarah's right. It's unrealistic to expect. We can always hope for a 0% increase, and I'm f quite fiscally conservative, but I do not believe that every year we can come in with uh, a 0% budget. And when we have made cuts in the past, they have been unpopular with groups of people. When we have cut personnel, like when we cut dispatching personnel a few years ago, there was a great outcry from some of the very same people. So you can't please everybody most <coughs> of the time. You can only please some of the people some of the time. But I, I do think um, Councilor Walsh was correct when he said the process has been exhaustive. And uh, I will be supporting the municipal budget. Thank you. Any other, uh, Jim? David, I, I just want to reiterate the, the fact that the, you know, there are going to be people who disagree that the process is not as robust as it should be. I think ultimately we get elected as councillors to represent the citizens in our town, and there's a point to which you have to have some respect for the folks that work in this town for us as citizens, and I see a tremendous amount of work going into the detail that gets to us. And I sit in meetings with all of you, and there are questions asked, lots of questions about things that seem very obvious but need to be vetted. And they are vetted in a way that I think I, I can walk away with some confidence that we're getting an honest, straightforward budget and something that I think all of us in this town live here and have invested 
and wish to continue to live here and have the infrastructure survive for years to come. Uh, I, um, you know, I've met with uh, the group that is particularly interested in this greater uh, question and. Uh,